Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 here to talk about SEC basketball for Wednesday night. Let's start in order of tip-off. Florida, Tennessee, 6 Eastern in Knoxville. The Vols, 9-point favorites according to Ken Palm. Boy, the Gators just have not looked good offensively without Colin Castleton. Looked awful in a loss at Ole Miss. Tennessee has not looked good offensively, but the Vols pretty consistent on defense. Tennessee, 9 points favored by Ken Palm what do you think yeah Florida only scored 54 points in that loss to Ole Miss um you know they scored 61 in that ugly win against Vanderbilt but I think Tennessee's defense the difference here no Colin Castleton um I just think that, you know Tennessee as we said they're, they're a pretty good defensive team and they held Vandy to 60 they held LSU to 50 um I think Florida as we said it's been a grind to be able for them to score right now and so I think Tennessee actually these two usually seemingly play some, some pretty close games, but it's hard to to do anything right now with Florida, I think, from a confidence standpoint, just because they, you know, we saw what they did at Ole Miss, and that was just an ugly game and an ugly yes. performance. And, you know, defensively, right, we talked about it. Kermit Davis, good defensive coach. Uh, Tennessee, one of the best defensive teams in the country. I think Tennessee is just – I think their defense will, will be the difference here, and, and it's just – there's no reason to kind of bank on Florida figuring it out unless Colin Castleton plays, so – so Tennessee covers the nine, if that's about what the line is. I would say yes, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm kind of feeling that with you. Okay, speaking of Vanderbilt, the Commodores travel to Columbia, where the Gamecocks won their last game over Georgia. These two teams played a couple weeks ago. South Carolina won that one, I think, 72-70. to 70. I was in the gym for that. Not super impressed with either of these teams offensively right now. Vanderbilt really struggling. Scotty Pippen is their main offensive cog. He's not playing very well right now. Uh, Gamecocks, did they get a little momentum by coming back to beat Georgia? 48 fouls in that previous game. Um, that's probably why you weren't impressed with either team. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of fouls. Um, South Carolina did, though, shoot 74% from two. Uh, that can't happen for Vanderbilt if they're going to win this game. Uh, because, look, again, South Carolina's not – a great shooting team. We keep talking about it. They're not a great offensive team, but somehow they shot 74% from two. So I think if you're Vanderbilt, look, it's pretty simple. You have to make them beat you shooting jump shots. Like they, they have to shoot jump shots and they have to shoot long shots. Uh, because if you put them in that scenario, I don't think South Carolina wins this game, but uh, Vanderbilt has just been a team that, man, they are just one of those teams that I think it's just, I, you don't know what you're going to get. Like we've said this so many times. And I think that quite honestly, I think Vanderbilt's probably a better team than South Carolina. Uh, and maybe some people don't disagree with that, but uh, some people may, may disagree with that. I just, I just find it hard to believe though, that, you know, going into this game, it was such a close game last time. Um, South Carolina to me, like you said, maybe finds a little bit of confidence scoring 83 against a bad Georgia team. Vanderbilt's a much better defensive team. I don't think that it's going to be to that level. I think this is probably a pretty low-scoring game. You know, I don't think it's going to be in the 50s, but like lower 60s is probably my guess, mm -hmm. just based on how these two teams play, even though it could be kind of up-tempo. Uh, but I've got to pick South Carolina. I think that for Vanderbilt, it's just um, – it's hard to – look, it's hard to pick either team and feel confident about it. Yeah. But I think South Carolina's the home team, and as we always say, sometimes you just revert to that and – and go with that. So I think that's that's what I'll do here with South Carolina. Should be a close game, though. I'm with you on that because Carolina figured out it could just pound the ball in post. It got Vandy in foul trouble, had a lot of success. Commodores have one paint defender, and that's Quentin Malora Brown. You get him in foul trouble, which can happen uh, on the road. I, I'm with you. I just think this lines up well for Carolina. Okay, Arkansas travels to Ole Miss. That one is tipping off at 7 Eastern Arkansas. According to Ken Pomeroy, a four-point favorite. Seems to me like Arkansas is the team that has found consistency in winning formulas, while Ole Miss, as you pointed out, um, just big extremes from night to night on, on what you get there. Some nights the Rebels are awful. Some nights they're good. It feels like Arkansas right now, the more consistent team. I think they figured out who needs to play, and it seems like it is starting to click for Eric Musselman. Yeah, Ole Miss can beat Mississippi State at home by double digits, Florida at home by double, double digits, minus Colin Castleton, of course. But they can also get beat by 25 at home to Missouri. And it's like, you know, I don't know how you find that middle ground in there to feel, you know, confident about Ole Miss. It's just kind of one of those where, man, you just don't know what you're going to get. But because they did just beat Florida, um, you know, pretty handily and, and played well defensively, I think that makes this game a lot more interesting now. 
Uh, but I, I think Arkansas has just kind of found their groove, right? And we talk about the, the difference in momentum and those kind of things. I think this is just a team that's figured out, hey, we've got to start winning games, and they're doing that. And they're finding ways to win some of these close games, like the one against A&M, you know, pulling out that win at LSU. Uh, and I think they do it again here. I'd probably pick Arkansas just because, you know, even though Ole Miss is coming off that win, consistency has been an issue for both of these teams. But Arkansas is just playing more consistent right now. And uh, I think when you look at kind of how the matchup plays out, you know what you're going to get defensively, I think, from both teams. Um, but overall, I mean, Ole Miss is going to probably, we talked about the Vanderbilt-South Carolina game. If I'm Ole Miss, I try to force Arkansas to shoot the ball uh, far away because they're not a good three-point shooting team, as we've said. But I also think there's a scenario where Arkansas can just attack and drive it to the rim and and get some some opportunities there. So I pick an Arkansas on this one. I think that they are they are riding that high right now, and uh, I think there's a, a decent chance, as I mentioned before, there's a good chance they could be sitting here at six and five in the league, maybe seven, or excuse me, six and three in the league, maybe seven and three in the league. Uh, they got Ole Miss next, George after that, then Mississippi State at home. So I, I like this spot for Arkansas. Arkansas is only one and two on the road, but that last one was LSU on the yeah. January fifteenth. That was Saturday, and they won that one, you know, by seven points. So. Again, if you want to go recency, Arkansas, that's in that span where we feel like they've kind of got it together and they're a different team. Okay, last one on the board. A&M goes to LSU, 9 p.m. tip-off. Aggies 11-point dogs, according to Ken Palm. That seems like a lot because I think A&M's a tough team, and LSU, I, I guess, still out without Xavier Pinson. Do we know? Yeah, that's the question. I, I think it, it that to me is high if they're without Xavier really Pinson, high. I think, yeah. You, you know what I'm you know where I'm going on this. Like this is this is rock fight territory. I think with these two, um, two two good defensive teams, one you know elite defensive team, but I don't think you can undersell a And M either on that side. I think they're very talented. And and let's be honest, as I've said many times now, like a And M's 15 and four. Look at these SEC games that they've lost these past two. They lose by six to Kentucky. They had their chances to win that one. They lose at Arkansas by three in overtime. They are right there in every game they've played this season pretty much. Uh, so I find it hard to believe I'm going to go against that here and, and think that LSU, who again, right, how many times have we talked about this, they're just not a great offensive team, even with Xavier Pinson on the floor. So I'd probably take LSU to win, but I think this is, should be a pretty close game. I mean, I, I, I'm talking, I think this is a possession-type game probably late in the game. Uh, so... I think that's way too high, but maybe I'm just I'm not seeing something there. Maybe it's just Texas A&M. Uh, you know, I mean, look, they've already adapted well on the road, right? Like mm-hmm. I know they've only played Georgia. They're one. In, they're one in three. And granted, it's Oregon State, Missouri, and and Georgia, but they did take Arkansas to OT on the road right. on Saturday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so I think for that reason, I think this is a pretty close game, and I think A&M's even got a shot here. And and I, LSU's just not the kind of team that that I've said many times. They, to me, don't feel like a team that's just going to go out and just overwhelm you from an offensive standpoint. So, I think a m keeps it close, but but I'd probably take LSU to, to snap that three-game losing streak. Yeah, and LSU wins a lot of games on athleticism. I don't know that, that a and quite as athletic, but they're athletic enough to keep it close. Um, yep. We'll be back with more videos later in the week. Blake, tell folks quickly where they can go with our partnership with Action 24-7. Yep, Action 24-7. We'll put the link in the description below. Uh, use the code SOUTH14. You sign up your first deposit. They'll match up to $800. So you can bet on all these games. And, yeah, just click on that link in the description of this video. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will see you again very soon.